It's great to be able to have this long interview with you, Josh, yeah. about uh, the Jazz Festival this year. My pleasure. And uh, just a few short little questions. And the first one is basically telling me about your career in music, how such, to get started. And such as it is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I'm, I graduated the University of Toronto Jazz Performance Program and a trumpet player. Um, and when I got out of university, I sort of had this bizarre idea of playing in smoky jazz clubs and making a living that way. The reality didn't quite uh, match up with the, uh, with the dream. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, in the first couple of years out of school, I, I, was, I was playing a fair bit and I was uh, doing a lot of private teaching, which I was really enjoying. I decided mm -hmm. to get into arts administration, which of course, as you know, uh, has immediately propelled me to the top 1%. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, my first full-time job in Arts and Inn was with the Royal Conservatory of Music yeah. um, with the Glenn Gould School, which is the professional training program run out of the Royal Conservatory. First year, I had to produce, I think, at least one concert, and maybe two concerts, up at the Toronto Centre for the Arts in the, in the Western Recital Hall, so you know, all the logistics involved in that, helping out with the marketing campaign. Um, when I left the conservatory, I managed a children's choir for two and a half years. The High Park Choirs of Toronto, and I'm still actually oh, right. that uh, very good choir. Yeah, an excellent sort of choir things. in the yeah. West End. And again, that was a a really formative experience for me because it was kind of there was a, a very strong and active board of directors, a great set of parents. The kids were amazing to work with, so it was a positive experience that way. But I was the sole administrator mm -hmm. for the choir, so it was kind of up to me to ensure that the choir kind of stayed on track. And I just learned a ton in a really positive environment, and that, that, that was hugely important for me. Um, at the same time, I was working with a contemporary music ensemble called Continuum Contemporary Music. I'm the administrator there, and I still am working with, with Continuum. Mm -hmm. And when the opportunity at the Jazz Festival came up, I decided to, to really jump on it. Um, and it was sort of a strange thing when, when the, the Jazz Festival thing came up, because I didn't actually know, I mean, I knew Jim Gallery was, was retiring, mm -hmm. but I didn't know that the job was actually open. Mm -hmm. um, and I had a chance meeting, chance encounters with two different people who said, you know, the position is open, I think you might actually be really good for it, so you should go for it. So mm -hmm. I did. Mm -hmm. And that's where I am. <laughs> Great. Yeah. What have you learned in this job uh, at uh, this jazz festival? Well, it's, it, when, you, when you phrase the question that way, I should say that prior to the Toronto Jazz Festival, I was the artistic director with the Markham Jazz Festival for four right. years. Yes. And so it was a great opportunity for me to, to really have my first go at booking a festival, mm -hmm. working within a budget to make that happen, um, learning how audiences react to different types of shows, mm -hmm. things like that. So that's a skill set that has easily transferred over to the Toronto Jazz Festival. Mm -hmm. In terms of things that I've learned about the, the, the position at the Toronto Jazz Festival, is it's a totally different game mm -hmm. when you're talking about a festival of this size and scope. Um, mm -hmm. And also a festival that's based primarily on ticket sales, mm -hmm. right? Because the the equation and the balance that goes into booking an act, finding an act that an audience will appreciate and that an audience will want to buy tickets for, it's really different than just booking a series of free shows. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, when I book free shows, I still want to make sure that the audience has a great time, that they're engaged, that the musicians are really interesting on stage, and all that sort of stuff. Um, but there's not that kind of risk involved on the revenue side. So as soon as, as soon as that risk creeps into the equation, everything changes. So even if I've got uh, an act that I think is fantastic, um, if they don't sell any tickets, then I'm kind of sunk. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's really complicated to find that right balance of fantastic artistry and ticket sales. Yeah, I remember your, your note that you put up on, on Facebook on that particular subject. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And that's probably been one of the biggest, the biggest things that I've had to adjust to. And philosophically, that's a real challenge, too, because, I mean, at the core, I sort of feel strongly that a jazz festival should be booking the best in the jazz world. Mm -hmm. And I, I say to people, like, if it was, if it was up to me, um, if it was my ship to run, I could book the best jazz festival in the world that would go bankrupt after one year. Mm -hmm. Because the reality is, no matter how good a jazz artist is as far as I'm concerned, and in the eyes of you or my, eyes of my colleagues in the wider jazz community, if that artist doesn't produce ticket sales, then the festival doesn't run. Mm. Yeah. So philosophically, I've had to really 
expand and reevaluate what appears on the stages here at the Jazz Festival. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think there's, there's a fair bit of room within the mandate, the Jazz Festival mandate, um, to produce shows that feature a wide variety of acts. Uh, that maybe push the push the edges a little bit of jazz, but I think there's room. I think there's room for that. And and so the philosophy that I take now is I'm interested in booking jazz artists. I'm interested in booking artists that have influenced jazz. So maybe that's um, someone like a hip hop artist who whose music is is featured primarily or not primarily, but um, widely in the jazz world. So mm -hmm. I don't know who that would be. Like the Roots, for example. I mean, right. the Roots have huge jazz influences, um, and they've influenced jazz music to a certain extent as well. So jazz music, um, uh, musicians that have influenced jazz, and music that has been influenced by jazz. Mm -hmm. So you take a look at uh, groups, say, like a Tower of Power. Mm -hmm. you, you know, they might not be jazz, necessarily, but they have elements, all of the elements, they've been so strongly influenced by jazz music, and vice versa, they have influenced Jazz music. I mean, you probably know. Yeah, they had the influence of funk on. on Absolutely. On. Maybe you could just tell me now about some of the highlights of this year's jazz festival. Do you think? There's so much. Um, you know, the opportunity, for example, to see Janelle Monae on mm -hmm. the stage, and it's going to be amazing. And mm -hmm. I am she. But and because the same night that she's on the main stage, have, opening the thing with a party, mm -hmm. um, Kurt Rosenwinkel is doing a solo show at Church of the Holy Trinity. Oh wow! And like, that's, that'll be good. That's going to be amazing. I mean, what a special opportunity to see such an important artist mm -hmm. in a in a fairly intimate environment playing yeah. solo. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, those are those are two really great ways to kick off the festival. Mm -hmm. You know, Esperanza Spalding, we're so excited to have her mm -hmm. here. Robert Glasper in the Experiment, we're so right. excited that he's going to be here this year. Um, other highlights. I mean, I'm looking forward to the Bad Plus with Josh Redman, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Hiromi's Trio. Yeah. Which I mean, we're just going to knock it out of the park yeah. in the first half, and in the second half is the Bad Plus featuring Josh Redman. Mm -hmm. And we do our best to feature local artists as well. Um, we have a free show every day at 5 o'clock on Nathan Phillips Square. Mm -hmm. So usually it's populated exclusively by, by local artists, and this year's no exception. Brian Barlow's big band kicks it off on the 22nd okay. with a salute to Duke Ellington. Yeah. Um, one of the shows I'm really looking forward to on that series is the Karn Davidson Nine. So it's oh, William yeah. Carr and Tara Davis. That's going to be really good. They're an eye-piece band. Yeah. It's, a, it's a brand new band. I think they formed it kind of six months ago. Yeah. That sort of thing. This is going to be... a concert in, in London. Yeah, that's right. In the Alien Terra. Yeah, and they were at the Rex yeah. a couple of months ago. Um, so it's it, it's a, a brand new group. It's going to be their first festival of uh, appearance. Uh, and, and it's going to be a great show. I mean, some of the top musicians in Toronto are in the group. So mm -hmm. it's, it's a, a great way to do it. And, and, you know, one of the other local bands that I'm really excited about is this kind of jazz, folk, fusion band called Hobson's Choice. Um, oh, I haven't heard of that. It's a great quartet. Yeah. Um, who is it? Who is it? Yeah. Harley Card on guitar and vocals. Yeah. Rebecca Hennessy on trumpet. Mm -hmm. uh, she sing, does some singing as well. Uh, Felicity Williams mm -hmm. is the lead vocalist. Beautiful voice. And Michael Davidson on vibes. Mm -hmm. So this cool instrumentation, great writing. They sound fantastic. And they're uh, doing a CD release, actually at the festival Correct. as part of the, the series called The Incubator, which we run at the Music Gallery. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we've got all these great international artists coming in, and we've also got these fantastic local artists that are being featured on our stages. Um, so, you know, beyond that, I don't know, you can look at this <laughs> Beyond that, it's go to torontojazz.com and, yeah. and, and check it all out, because it's, uh, I'm really happy with the lineup this year. It's yeah. actually really pleased with the balance this year. I think we've got a lot of great acts, especially on that main stage, that really do represent what jazz is doing these days, you know, Roy Hargrove, Trombone Shorty, Esperanza Spalding, Bad Plus, uh, Tower of Power, mm -hmm. even to a certain extent, like the Tedes Tedeschi Trucks Band, I mean, great mm -hmm. blues band, uh, blues, blues, that cross armor, blues, rock, whatever you want to call it, mm -hmm. um, Janelle Monet, Betty Levette, like it's, it's this great assortment of musicians that, that seem to fit in my mind really well on the jazz festival stage. Mm 